So um, just sqlps.io slash YouTube. You can get to where we'll put the recording for this after we're done. Uh, always like to call that out. And advance. This one just put together last night. Um, <clears throat> all the major components of SQL Server are available in the SQL Server provider. Now that we actually have a PowerShell engineer who can um, you know, look after the provider, um, it's actually kind of nice to use now. Uh, years ago, even just uh, 12 months ago, it wasn't so nice to use. But SSAS is there, obviously SQL Server itself, SSIS, SS, uh, AS, extended events, and here's something else, DAC, did a kid administer a connection, and um, there's even one more thing. It's like you, it's another smaller thing. All there, you can traverse all of them, the one that's not there is SSRS of the major components. So I put together a connect item out there for po people to upvote uh, to get SSRS added. Um, <clears throat> they put together some commands to work with SSRS and I'll show you those here in just a minute. But while I was working with those, I kept on thinking to myself, man, this would be so much easier if we just had a provider. And then, you know, a lot of this stuff would happen naturally. So that's why I put together this connect item. Uh, would love it if you can upvote it and share it, especially if you're having a single Saturday, tell people about it, things like that. So that's it for that. And now for demos. Let me do share screen one. While you load that up, I just want to ask the audience, I can see now that people are saying that it was choppy. Is it still choppy for everyone? It's better. If How it's much better. It, okay. Um, because right now I have the three minutes that it'll take for me to reboot my computer while Aaron is doing his presentation. Uh, is it is it good enough or should I reboot? It's pretty good now. Okay. Oh, that is good, Chrissy. Okay, good. Awesome. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. So very quickly, the back in 2012, they had a performance dashboard that you could install on uh, SSRS and you could run this setup.sql and then give you a lot of metrics about your databases. And they have revived that and they, uh, the SQL Tiger team put it up on GitHub. Um, there's a post about it here. It explains how it works, uh, explains how to deploy it. And it's, you know, a dashboard. It's got some nice reports in it. They could probably be upgraded. It's on GitHub. So, you know, if you have some good ideas, you could submit them and they'll probably accept them. I had an idea and they accepted it. And basically what happened was I was going through the setup directions and I got to, uh, let's see, step two download, you know, the SSRS reports. And then they told you download SSDT BI for Visual Studio 2012 or 2013. And that's where I kind of lost it. Uh, because the one thing that they needed you to do is change this person's um, uh, web server, which is on his laptop, and they were going to have you download a one gig install file just to do that. And I was like, no, that's not acceptable. There, there is a better way, and let's do it the right way. And I happen to know about the SSRS commands, and you're not going to believe that it is this easy, but it is, in fact, this easy. I'm bring my SSRS window open. Everyone seeing my screen okay? Yep. yep. Yes. Good. All right. I'm just going to show you here in my folder. Uh, nothing here at the moment. And on this PC, on the C drive, uh, there is no SQL Server performance, um, uh, whatever it's called, SQL Server dashboard reports, performance dashboard reports. But because I only have two minutes left, I am just going to go ahead and kick off the script and tell you that what it does is it goes and sees if you have the reporting services commands. And if you don't, it'll go ahead and download them from GitHub for you. It'll then download the SSRS project and the setup.sql file. It'll then uh, deploy this to your web server and it will also deploy the setup.sql to everything in your registered servers, so you'll want to make sure you know what's about to happen there. And then I actually, okay, good. I have to delete it before I go and deploy it, so that's already taken care of. So let's just go ahead and kick off the script and see how long it takes. 
There it goes. Downloading files. I guess I probably should have put it into verbose mode, but there's 22 reports in there, and it's got to go create a new folder on SSRS, deploy the 22 reports, and then uh, run the setup.sql, and then finally here, the very last thing it does is whatever SSRS server you told it to go do this to, I told it to do my local, obviously, um, it'll then go open a web page to that server uh, and start that up. And there it goes right now, actually. And it'll start you in the performance dashboard main. And then you can do, like here, I'm gonna do local host. Get the performance of my SQL server. And I can see that GoToWebinar is really using up a lot of CPU right now. And there's this database storage report that I thought you all would find interesting. Once you click on it, um, basically does an analysis, kind of like the old enterprise manager of how much free space there are on your data files. Um, I actually, a couple days ago, didn't have quite this much. Um, and this report let me know that there were some that were really full, and I went and took care of that. So that is a very quick uh, overview, but I want to walk back one second to show you that when it downloaded this pack of reports, there are 22 reports in here. And it's hard to get it all on the screen, but this one command, write folder content, took the entire folder of reports and sent them all up to my server with one command, just one command, put all 22 reports on the server, it needed three pieces of information. The name of the SSRS server, the uh, location on disk of the reports, and then the folder on the SSRS server that I wanted the report stored into, and that's all it did, and it went and it deployed all 22 reports for me. And that is pretty much it. Do you guys have any questions about that? Yeah, I, I wonder how many of these um, it, it does Rob, how much of it, uh, Rob, does this overlap with yours? Um, and and if, if it's a little amount, do you plan to use some of this uh, in DBA reports? These reports are kind of old, so and, they need some updating. Oh, yeah. And Rob may not yeah, be on the line. The rest 2016 is out. They could probably use a little, little updating. It doesn't seem like Rob's on the line, too. Was just about okay. Um, well, cool. Thank you so much. I uh, those are really cool reports, and that is uh, an awesome um, uh, uh, a command that that uploads the entire thing to the folder. And by the way, everybody, this is on GitHub. That that actual that module that he's using is the uh, SQL Server Reporting Services team's uh, GitHub repository. Uh, can you show them how to or where to download it? Or uh, isn't it on the gallery? Yep, uh, it's on the gallery, and you can also um, you can do that invoke expression thing that we've got going on. Uh, if you go to oh, I'll just open up the page. I believe we made it sqlps.io slash ssrs, I believe. We'll take you straight to their GitHub, I believe, maybe. Let's go find out. Great. Point, Chris. Yep, there we go, sqlps.io slash ssrs. Take you straight to their GitHub page. Awesome. Um, and it'll... It'll tell you all about it, tell you how to very easily install it, and tell you all the commands that are available. There's 28 commands, things like register, Power BI, set your data source, all kinds of stuff. Cool. Thank you so much. Yep. I'm going to switch it over to you now. All right. Let's see if this works. And Aaron, I want to see the, uh, the remote chapter real big. Oh, cool. Now it is real big. Okay, let's see. Show this window. So you guys should see that, right? Yep. Can everyone see? Excellent. 
Okay, I'm going to push you off the screen, Aaron, because I want to see the virtual chapter people. I asked Andy uh, to make sure that I would be able to see you all because the last time that I did this, it was uh, for the hybrid chapter. And because I couldn't see any expressions, I was just nervous the entire time. So this is this is a lot better for me. All right. Um, did, did you not follow my advice then? Which one my was that? If you um, the reason I didn't speak then is because I managed to mute my microphone. And oh, yeah. Realize. Um, the one about putting a um, post-it note sticker of a smiley face next to your, mo next uh, to your monitor. So you, you know, the smiley face is still a fake face, and I like to see real human faces. Makes you smile when you talk. Well. <laughs> anyway, go on. Thank you so much. All righty. Okay, so this is the session DBA Tools Love SQL Server. Uh, we have variations, PowerShell Love SQL Server, but I'm just going to jump right on in. Oh, let me set my kitchen timer. All right, there we go. All right, so one moment. Let me click this box. You guys might be, you know what? It's, it's very strange. There we go. All righty. Okay, so what if SQL Server migrations went more like this? You start with an empty instance, no databases, credentials, logins, no jobs, and then you execute a single command where you specify the source, the destination, and the migration method. Boom, you get up, you go grab a cup of coffee, come back to your desk, and your migration is complete. I've actually done this a ton of times, and I use DBA tools to do it. Even for SharePoint, super awesome. All right, so my name is Chrissy Lemaire. I am a PowerShell MVP. I'm also a DBA at NATO Special Ops. I work for General Dynamics and we build rockets. And we also built RoboCups, <laughs> RBS 80 Heavy Phase Plasma Gun. And I thought that was funny when I saw it in there. I was like, man, I work for a pretty cool company. It's not entirely true, but it is in the movie. I uh, I also own realcajunrecipes.com with my family. So even though uh, I do live and work in Belgium, I'm from Louisiana, uh, totally Cajun on both sides. And I run Real Cajun Recipes with my mom and my best friend. We've had it since 2002. So if you want some real Cajun recipes and not the fake stuff that's just like blackened or too hot, you go to our website. You'll see what we eat uh, whenever we're growing up. I'm also on Twitter. I have a, a, a Twitter handle that's pretty short. It's just my initials. That's at CL. Uh, whenever Twitter was, was coming about, I did live in San Francisco, so I was an early adopter. And also, I have some friends there that made it easier. So on the agenda, I already talked about who I am. I'm also going to give an overview of DBA tools. I'll talk about the requirements. I'll show an install. We'll do hella demos. And then after that, we do have time for questions, but um, I'm going to let Rob talk and then I'll answer questions as he's presenting. So DBA tools, it first started out as start SQL migration .ps1, And over time, uh, it grew into a module that now has over 140 commands and 45 contributors to GitHub. It's a really big uh, community project that I'm super proud of. And the system requirements, because it started out as a migration module, I wanted to keep them as low as possible. So PowerShell v3 on the client and SQL Server Management Studio 2008 R2 at least. Um, and then on the server, we do always try for 2000. Now the recommended uh, PowerShell version five is just so much better to program in. Um, and then SQL Server Management Studio 2012 plus, I just find that machines or, or, or client sides, like uh, the workstations that have 2012 plus are just a lot better. And at the server level, it's 2005 and above. And the reason is because we use SMO, which were the SQL management objects, and they're just a lot better in 2005 and above than they are in 2000. Now, I do want to emphasize that most DBA tools commands don't even care about what's on the server. It's just the client that you have to worry about. So just update your workstation if you can. There's a couple things, uh, and we're going to be making a, kind of a legend uh, for you to see. But there are, there are some commands where we do go and execute things remotely. But I think with even those, we're using very basic syntax there. 
The installation, I wanted to make sure that it was super easy because for me at first, GitHub was really hard. Um, and whenever I thought about an open source project that I liked, I thought about Notepad++. And when you go to their website, it's really easy. You can find the download, you just click it. And I wanted to kind of make sure that DBA tools offered the same. So the first way that we offer is through the PowerShell gallery. You could just type install module DBA tools and boom, it'll install for all of your users. Um, or if you don't have administrative access, you could just scope it to the current user and it will install in your local documents. The other way is that uh, you can just go to our website at dbatools.io slash download and, uh, and copy and paste this. You just invoke expression, copy, paste, it'll do everything for you. And, and watch, I'm actually going to show you. So this is a video of how easy it is to install the module. So you just click on download from dbatools.io and then it'll show you the requirements. And then right now on the screen, you can see two methods, uh, but there are even more ways to do it. So you just copy and you run as administrator for this one paste it and powershell gallery isn't trusted right out the box so you just answer yes whenever it prompts you if you haven't trusted it yet it'll download all of that and now we see whenever we do a get command dash module dba tools we have a whole bunch of commands specifically intended for us uh, SQL Server data professionals. And now the other one is just, you can just copy and paste because the gallery is for newer versions or if not, then you have to kind of configure it. You just copy paste this, it'll go to GitHub, it'll download the zip, it'll extract it for you and it'll put it in the proper place. And then boom, every time that you open up uh, your PowerShell, you're gonna have access to DBA tools. It's as simple as that. So for support, whenever we develop, we aim for supporting SQL Server 2000 through vNext, Express through Data Center Edition, clustered and standalone instances, Windows and SQL authentication, default and named instances, and multiple instances on one server. Basically, whatever your environment has to throw at us, we want to support. So speaking of support, we also support command line completion. So here you can see this is copy SQL database. We specify the source of SQL 2005. And what this will do is it'll auto populate the databases parameter. So you can see here it went and it got that list. And then now you don't have to worry about typing it out. You can just tab through it. You also don't have to worry about specifying the wrong database. All right, so I'm about to do the demos, uh, but before I do, I just wanna say this, that we do have a free a, a feature freeze coming soon. So on March 1st, we won't add any new features. We're really proud of releasing often, um, but that's gonna slow down while we make way for 1.0. And 1.0 is gonna be really awesome, um, but it's gonna have breaking features. So we're gonna, well, this is what we'll be doing. We're gonna fix all of the bugs reported at dbatools.io slash issues, which is just a short link to get uh, to GitHub. And, uh, and you know, instead of people working on, on new commands, um, then anybody who can program, jump in and help resolve all of the bugs. Next, we're gonna make the permissions check more accurate. Right now, it pretty much requires sysadmin for everything because I didn't wanna to get too granular. Uh, we're going to standardize the command name. So there, you'll see that some commands are copy SQL, some are, uh, you know, dash DBA. Everything is going to go to dash DBA. We're going to standardize the parameter names as well, help, variables, everything like that. We're also going to standardize the output. So some of our commands output text, not super useful. We're going to go to using verbose and objects. And then we're also going to add a lot more uh, pipeline support. And we're going to test, 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 test. I want this to be the most stable 1.0 possible. Um, but the releases will continue. So as we're fixing all of these bugs, uh, we will continue to release through our site. And I'm hoping for, so we stop on March 1st, we stop doing new features, and we're hoping that 1.0 will be released on June 1st of 2017. Cross your fingers. All right, so... The first command that we'll be covering is start SQL migration. 
Now this command is a wrapper for a whole bunch of other, I think it's like 26 copy commands. So this is, this is intended to be an instance to instance migration command. If you want to get more granular, then you can use the individual copy commands. And in this video, I'm going to be showing a migration of a SQL Server instance that supports SharePoint. So let's start. You can see here, I used a SQL Server alias called SP SQL. That's uh, Microsoft best practices. Here's our alias. It points to SQL cluster. And we'll go ahead and take a look at SQL cluster. It has all of the SharePoint databases. And the destination 2016 doesn't have really anything in it. Now we're going to go and click around the site. You can see it's just kind of a basic site, but it's responsive. It works. It has stuff. Nothing up my sleeve here. Totally works. Now we're going to execute start SQL migration. We'll specify the source of SQL cluster, the destination of 2016, and then we're going to use the backup and restore method and then use a network share that both of them can access. And now it's going to copy over. That's all the SP configure, the custom errors, the credentials, the database mail. It's migrating user objects and system databases like Ola Hallengren scripts. Then it's going to move on to, that usually takes a second to enumerate, uh, central management server, backup devices, linked servers with the passwords, triggers. And now we're performing the database migration. So the database migration can be performed in one of two ways. We have backup and restore or detach and attach. And what was really important for this is that you don't have to worry about where do I put it? It'll use the default paths uh, for the data and log by default. It also keeps all of the properties. So you'll see that it's successfully updated, broker enabled. If it's read only, it'll keep that and so on. So just as everything far you could get up, you could grab some tea, you could drink some tea. That's what I'm doing now. Now it's going to copy over the logins with their SIDs, their passwords, their everything. And it also creates a transcript, which is really cool for, um, I use it whenever I perform migrations. So whenever I perform migrations, I schedule them out, right? And whenever they are scheduled, I just go ahead and look to see, did the night before, did the migration work? Totally does. I have a blog post on the website if you'd like to see more about that. So now that it's migrated, we're going to change the client alias from SQL cluster, or sorry, the server alias from SQL cluster to SQL 2016. And now to show that nothing's up my sleeve, I usually do this for migrations anyway. I want to make darn sure that there's no connections here. So I'm just going to stop that SQL cluster. So now we have all the resources going offline. And boom, when we go back to SharePoint, not even like nothing messed up. This is, it's super awesome. It stayed online. And the first time that I did this, I was like, this is not possible. This, did, did this really work? And then so I took down my destination server and then SharePoint went offline. So this isn't cached. This just is a successful migration. It worked for SharePoint, worked for uh, System Center, and anything that I've thrown at it, this has done in its entirety. And the first time that I did it, I was like, what? Super excited. All right. So now I'm going to sit down for the demo. You guys in Rochester excited so far? Yes. Yes. I wish that I could see everyone. Unfortunately, this. OK, there we go. Mm. Sorry. Uh, no, it's, it's, no, it's not you guys. Um, go to yeah. webinar really for it froze exactly where my screen was. And so anytime that I start working on it, I cut off the lower right hand side. So I'll just switch people now. All right, there we go. Okay, so let's go here. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is show you my new trick. I was uh, I was recently presenting in Utrecht and this guy came up and he was like, oh, man, oh, because Rob was there and Rob, poor thing, he accidentally hit this and it executed everything. Right. And, and we're like, no, because that's the worst. So if you're ever doing a presentation, just go ahead and put a break in there and then you won't have to worry if you accidentally did it. Um, so if uh, for, for the sequel people in the room, um, I don't know, uh, how, well, how many of you, 
I would like to look at Rochester. How many of you are familiar with PowerShell in Rochester? Awesome, everybody. Okay, we got the guy in the back who's like just a little bit. All right, so um, by default, ooh, let's see. Give me back my screen. There we go. All right, so by default, uh, you have all of these paths that, uh, if you have anything in here, I think in PS3 and above, it will automatically load that. So if you ever notice, if you type in a command and it takes a little bit before it says, oh, that command doesn't exist, it's because it went through all of the modules in here to see if it exists, um, and then it'll auto load the module that it exists in. So because I don't really use it the same way that most people do, because I'm constantly developing, I'm just going to uh, import my module and do a force to ensure that I have the latest one. And then I'm going to set some variables. Um, you'll see I'm only going to copy over one thing, but I do have an old instance. Uh, I, have, I have a new instance that I'm going to be migrating to. Hmm. Am I? I think I'm just going to change this. We'll see. Um, and then the old one. So this is a cute little PowerShell trick that I like. So if you do old equals instance equals a SQL 2014, both old and instance will be assigned, will be uh, that SQL 2014 string. And then here's a couple servers, just, <laughs> just a couple. Um, and then all of my servers. And that way I can just pipe in a whole bunch of stuff and it'll go out to all of these servers and do things. I'm going to go past my new trick. So the first thing that I'm going to show you um, is it's all about SP configure. So for the one for you guys in Rochester, have do y'all work a lot with doing? Or how many of you are DBAs? Awesome, y'all my favorite. Okay, how how often do you mess with your configuration, like SP configure, copying it over and things like that? Not a lot. How about during migrations? Yeah. Like whenever I was doing my migrations, right? I'm like, oh, it has to match up. How do I do this? And people are like, oh, you make some T-SQL to execute some T-SQL to output some T-SQL. And I was like, no. So instead I made a PowerShell thing for it. So this, we have a command from Sir SQL. He's a SQL server. Um, his name is Nick Kane and he's an MCM. And what this command does, it'll go and it'll get all of your properties, but it's not just the output of SP configure. It actually shows a whole lot more, which is super cool. So check this out. So you know how SP configure just has like a limited number. This will actually show you if it's re running the default value. So what we have is we have an index of every single version of SQL Server and their default, and then we do a comparison. So it tells you if it's the default value, the running value, if it's dynamic. So if it's not, then you have to restart your SQL service. Is it advanced and stuff like that? So I really like this command. And what's cool with SQL Server, you can just take this. Now we're going to do a property compare. So we'll compare 2014 to 2016. And then we'll look at that in a grid view. So it's just as simple as this. If you want to, um, to check out differences between two servers that may or may not be matching up, let's check out the memory. So oh, did y'all see that? I love outgrid view. I just typed in mem at the top in that filter and it showed me everything that's related to memory. So you could see that this Mac server memory has 18 gigs and this one has only one gig. All right, so then what we're going to do is we're going to, this is what the copy, so before I had talked about instance to instance migration, um, but that's just a wrapper for all of these copy commands. And the copy command here that I'm going to use is copy SQL SP configure. Now with 1.0, that will become copy uh, DBA, as, sorry, yes, a DBA SP configure. So we'll specify the source and the destination. And then if you just leave it like that in 1.0, you're going to have to type in dash all. Um, but with the current one, if you just leave it like that, it'll copy everything over. Or you can use these auto-populated configs and just specify the two that you want to copy from the source to the destination. So you could see that not much has changed. It did go from one to one and one to one. But if that was zero, then it would have changed. And then what we'll do is we'll look at get uh, DBA SP configure again to see this. And here's the output. So we could see that um, they are they have changed from Microsoft's default value and that they're both running one. All right, so that was just warming you guys up for the exciting news this week, which is we have really, really cool uh, backup and restore 
release that's coming up. I, I was really hoping that it was going to be available today, um, but we ended up finding a couple things. And so we're going to be releasing it officially next week. Now I can see uh, this webpage, dbatools.io slash, let's see, you have to hide webcams. Okay. I'm going to turn you guys off because it said to, to hide my webcam. Can everybody still hear me? Would you be able to turn it on, Andy? This never happens. Well, she is that her? That's her. All right. Hey guys, can y'all you... can hear me now? That's yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks like she's, uh, she's gone. Back now. Yeah, man, I'm looking Ooh. at my pings and yes, it's Chrissy. it's real it's really bad. I am so sorry. We have actually really awesome fast internet access out here in Belgium and it's affordable and I love it usually. Um, of course it had to know that I'm doing a presentation. All right. So we're back on track. Uh, the last thing that you guys, y'all saw some SP configs and then did you hear me talk about snowball our release that that's coming up? No? That's where we lost you. Okay. Last thing we heard is we have some really cool. Yeah. All right. So I have some really cool news. Um, this week we wanted to, I, I was hoping that for this meeting, I would have snowball available. Um, or we would have Snowball available. Snowball is a release that's primarily revolving around backup and restore. This guy, Stuart Moore, he's a community member. He does really awesome things with backup and restore. Um, and while I can see this, it's because I'm, I'm logged into the site. Um, probably tomorrow or sometime next week, if you go to dbatools.io slash snowball, uh, we do make an announcement for each of our, um, each of our releases. So you could see the one right before it was Swifty, and that was all about SPNs. And I'm going to be showing you guys that um, uh, in, a, in a moment. But this release is super cool because we finally have Restore DBA database, and it makes it very easy to perform restores. Uh, it's as easy as this. So you can just say Restore DBA database, you specify your SQL server and the path, and it'll do the scans for you and then restore what's there. Some other things that I really like, this is a very detailed one, I'm just gonna kind of skim over, but something I really like is that he allowed us to restore to a point in time really easily. Um, so whenever this, this blog post is available, then you can just copy and paste this and go to town with it. Um, and then you can also script out. So if you do script out only, then it'll output the T SQL and it won't actually perform it. And then yes, we do support Ola Hallingren's maintenance solution. And I'm gonna be showing you that in the demo coming up. We also support XP Duratry and then the pipeline as well. So this is a really, really powerful command uh, that I know I'm going to be using all of the time. So let's go ahead and take a look. So the standard way, all right, now we're just going to specify our path. And what I'll do is I'll restore it to localhost and I'll specify the path on C. And it'll say, oh, hey, the database exists and it will not be overwritten without the with replace uh, switch. So I will just add in that with replace. And boom, it was just as fast as that, as that. And what it does is it outputs this object that shows information. One second, let me tell Google to stop. Um, it outputs uh, the instance, the database name, um, you know, if it was successful, if you're using no recovery, uh, the compression size and everything like that. So it gives you a lot of information. And now we're gonna do the Ola thing. How many of you in Rochester use Ola Hallingren's maintenance scripts? Cool. Almost everybody. All right. So I, I use them everywhere that I go. And what, you know, even though it's super awesome, I was always kind of worried, well, you know, if I do have a, a server that goes entirely offline, how long is it going to take me to recreate the scripts to put them all back? And I'm going to be offline forever. Well, now it's super fast. All right. So this is 
my central repository with this. So we're going to invoke this. And uh, we see that this is his, his structure. So you have full log and diff. When we go in there, we have some fulls. We have a diff and then some logs. And then what we do here is we specify the, the SQL server, the path. So the path that we were just in, we say with replace because I already have it on the server. And then for the destination data directory, if you don't specify anything, it'll just put it into your default log. Your logs are gonna, are gonna go to your default log and your, and your data is gonna go to your default data, but you can change that by using this switch. Now, of course, putting it on C is worst practice um, but we have some, some uh, servers that are configured worst practice because that does happen out in the field. And this is one. So you can see just as fast as that, how amazing was that, that it just went, it grabbed all of that and restored everything that we needed. So now it's just like, oh man, it, even if you do have some sort of horrible disaster and your entire server goes offline. If you have your Ola Hallingren scripts as well as we have an export SQL login, um, if you have that together, then you're, you're, you're off to a really, really good start. Now, this is pretty cool. Um, if you, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go to vnext and you can see here that nothing's there. And for those of you who don't know Ola Hallingren's uh, structure, this is what it looks like. So let's go back here. And then if I go here, these are all the databases, right? And so when you go inside each of them, they all look like the other one did. Now what you could do is for each database in get child item directory, so just get the directories, just go ahead and restore it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna take out no recovery because something with SSMS is slowing that down. Um, but you could do no recovery if you just want to stage it, uh, you know, for some later uh, logs to be applied. Or you can even set the restore time, which completely blows my mind. It's just so very cool. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to let this task run and then move on as it's restoring, if I can. But you know, it's, it's actually the, uh, it's the ISC, so I don't know if I can. But what we'll do is we'll go here. And you might've seen uh, there was a, what looked like an error and what that was is I have a contained database that can't be migrated. So you remember that this before was just nothing. And now as fast as this, it's just restoring that entire Ola Hallingren directory. Who's pumped in Rochester? <laughs> <laughs> For real, it's so cool. All right, so I, I mean, I don't even wanna stop it. There we go. Hey, thank you, that was super fast. I do have a really fast lab, uh, I really like it. Um, all right, so the other thing, and you might be saying, hey, you're showing me a lot of restores. That's because that's, that's the awesome one. We did um, rush in a, uh, a, a, a backup DBA database, so it does basic uh, database stuff, and Stuart is actually gonna jump in and make it even beefier. Right now it's just at 1.0. So we have get DBA database. Um, and you can see you just specify, I don't know if I had mentioned previously, I did best, uh, worst practices and I said, I really want the SQL community to know that you can specify multiple databases and I made a bad decision. And, uh, and so in 1.0, it's gonna be singular. And that's the way that the PowerShell team suggests um, so just know whenever I execute this, it hurts my heart because I've since really changed my position on singular versus plural. And I wish I'd have done it right from the very beginning. So if we do this, you could just see this is an SMO object. Uh, it shows you the basics, but if I were to pipe that to select star, I could get so much more information. But what I can do is say, uh, just take that database, pipe it to backup database, and by default, it'll just do it to the default backup directory. We really wanna make these commands as easy as possible, but you can also specify good old temp, and then it will back up to SQL 2005's temp directory. And uh, by default, we do copy only so that we don't mess with your chains. Uh, if you if you want to, you can specify no copy only and it'll make it a real full database. So boom, just like that, just like that, it took that and it backed up that database. Super duper easy. 
And it also gives you the script if you want to see what was going on in the background. Uh, something that I like, uh, the backup history. So now we're going to look at the backup history of dumpster fire in DB 2005, and we're going to send it to an out grid view so that it makes it just a lot easier. So this is the entire history that you still have in MSDB. We just kind of made it easier for you to see, and it'll tell you the software and everything like that. So if you want to do audits, that's super easy. Uh, we also made read DBA backup header. And I mean, I don't go around reading backup headers all the time, but I was really interested in what it looked like. So this is a lot of the information that's stored um, in your backups. So whenever SQL Server is reading it, um, that's what it sees. If you click here, then you can just get like some real basic information. So when did it finish? What was the version? So I made a backup on SQL Server 2016 and it was an 18 meg database, our backup. All right, next one. Oh, we just introduced find DBA command because you might be thinking, Chrissy, 140 plus commands is a whole lot. How am I going to find things? Well, we have find DBA command where we tag it. You can look for just a pattern um, if you want to search for a certain keyword. And then we also have it searching by author. So let's do it. A, we can just do it like this. Let's see. Let's see if it auto populates. Look at that. I'm just tabbing through. So this takes all of our tags and makes it easy. So let's see all the ones about memory. There we go. How cool is that? So that kind of makes it easier to approach. Also on the website, uh, I will be showing you that soon as well. Um, we really put a lot of information there and try to make it like with, you know, videos and screenshots and things like that. Now the next one, does anybody have any questions about their, their backup restore? Not yet. Okay, cool. Nope. Um, so now we're going to go to Swifty. There was, was that? Sorry, Christy. There was, there okay. was one question. Um, does the restore support Azure storage? Um, I don't, I don't think so. I didn't see it in the code. Um, but if you go to dbatools.io slash issues, it'll redirect you to our GitHub repository and you could just put in that request and uh, and then I'll go ahead and, and assign it to uh, to store it, and then he would be able to add it if it's possible. I recall it being kind of challenging. Oh wait, that's just the storage. The storage might not be so hard. Yeah, I, I think it's just a, uh, for restore SQL database. It's just a, another parameter, so I should think you you could access it in the SMO. Cool, awesome. All right, that's that's, that's all the questions in the chat. Awesome. Alrighty. Okay. So now we will be moving on to Swifty. This was by, uh, put out by my buddy Drew. It's all about SPNs. So who here in Rochester enjoys setting their SPNs and managing it and remembers the syntax for it, right? So I mean, remember set SPN dash L, but like what else? I don't know. I always have to go back to my blog and copy and paste that. And I don't want to remember. And now I don't have to because now Drew's commands we have get set. So let's see. He gave us get, which grabs all of the currently existing SPNs, makes it super easy. Check that out. And then we have test, which is really amazing. And I'll demo it. So it tests what you should have. And then, um, and then it shows you if you have it or not. And then we also have set SPN or DBA SPN and then remove DBA SPN. If you're about to decommission a server and you don't want things just hanging out. All right. So that is, if you just go to, if you're like, Hey, what are all these links? If you just go to DBA tools.io slash blog, we have a bunch of sites. Uh, sorry. We have a bunch of posts that talk about, the process behind it, like we're talking about standardizing the code. We have some videos, so we do highly encourage contributions. We give you code reviews. We really want to help you develop your SQL PowerShell skills. Um, and so you can either go, um, I have a, a first pull, P-U-L-L. Uh, if you go to dbatools.io slash first pull, um, it'll show you how to do it, or you can watch this video and so on. All right, so let's go and look at some really cool things. All right, so the first thing, um, who here uses the Kerberos Configuration Manager for SQL Server? Microsoft just recently updated it 
for SQL Server 2016? Nobody here? Well, I, I don't either. And after I ran it, I, I was kind of disappointed in the interface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just set this aside after connecting. And while it does its thing, I'm going to do a whole bunch of other things. And then I'm going to come check on it. So now we're going to check the Kerberos configuration for SQL 2016. That's one of my servers. So you just do your thing. All right. So what am I going to do? I'm going to get DBA SPN. This basically shows the, uh, if you do a set SPN dash L boom, that's what it looks like. So those are the SPN set on my current computer. Um, now I'm going to take all servers. So if you remember, there was like six servers. I'm going to pipe that to test DBA SPN. I'm going to send it to an out grid view with a dash pass through so that I can select which ones I would like to pipe to set. This is super cool. Let's go ahead and check in on this. Okay, you still logging in? All right, for one server. I'm sorry, Microsoft is just not, it's just not fast at all. So while Microsoft is still chilling, doing whatever it's doing, check it this out. We're, we're just, we're going through all of these other servers and testing it. So finally, I did like eight servers and had a conversation with you guys before this one on the right was done. And ours was a whole lot faster. So let's take a look at what we see here. So we show, it's actually very similar. Um, I wanted to make sure that, that the information that they provided, we provided as well. So you can see all of this. And then we have here the required in, uh, SPN. Is it set? Is it a cluster? Because that's important. Is TCP enabled? What's the port for it? Is it a dynamic port? And then we also give you warnings and errors. So if the SPN isn't missing. So again, without grid view, let's type in miss. So this will show us all of the ones that are missing. And because we did the pass through, we can just select what we want and hit OK. And it'll pipe it to the next command. So this one looks... Let's see, this one looks pretty good and I like this one and I should probably do that one and that one, why not? So I did it with a dash what if, and this will not actually execute the set SPN. It'll tell you what it's going to do. So you can see here that it's performing the operation, adding SPN to the service account and then adding constrained delegation as well. Something else that you could do is you can pipe get DBA SPN to remove it. So if you want to just remove all of your SQL Server related SPNs, you would just take off that what if, and then it would remove all of that. How exciting is that? Are y'all pumped in Rochester? So much, so much easier. Oh, I like the enthusiastic nod on the back. It's so much easier. <laughs> I do, because this excites me too. All right, so this one I called holiday, and I was kind of like, I don't know, should I call it holiday or vacation? I've lived in Belgium for like almost five years now, and they call it holiday here. And so I'm sorry, I should have just put both there. Um, so Rob Sewell, he gets me. I think that he says holiday as well. So whenever I go and I present at a conference or I leave for the, for the holiday, uh, or for a vacation, I like to run a few commands. Even though we have monitors set up, who's monitoring the monitoring? What if it stops emailing me and I didn't know? So I like to take these commands and I'm gonna be doing a blog post on this and I like to, to see what's going on. So I wanna test my, I wanna get information about my last backups. So we have this command, get DBA last backup by actually a Belgian guy, Klaus, and it'll go and it'll get all of your backups. And it'll also tell you the status like, hey, man, you don't have full or diffs. You probably should. And you don't have log backups in the last hour. You probably should. So you have this immediate, you know, human readable stuff. And then also, ooh, y'all, 90 days. My lab, thank, <laughs> thank God it's just a lab, huh? Because this is really messy. Some, some things I haven't backed up in over two years. And if there's nothing, then there's absolutely nothing to even report on there. This one doesn't have any backups whatsoever, but that's a really easy way. Fortunately, whenever I run this at work, it is, uh, it's all clean and it's all good. Everything is as expected and I could leave really relieved. So this is what I told it was get all the last backups where the last full is null. So none of these have backups. And if you're doing this in your own 
uh, environment, you're going to hope that none of this, you know, I think it might even skip over tempdb. It does. So you want zero results. And for me, I take log backups every 15 minutes. So I want to see, hey, get all the last backups where the log uh, time is greater than 15 minutes and the recovery model isn't simple because I don't care about that and I don't care about the model either. So we'll just take this. By the way, the code, I will also show you where that's at in case you want to copy it for yourself. So we can see here that it's not in such good shape and things aren't as expected. I probably shouldn't go on vacation. Uh, <laughs> I should probably stay at work and do some backups. The other thing that I like to do, this guy, Jacob Benslet, uh, Jagoop, he created uh, the get DBA last good check DB because I want to know when's the last time that my database has had a good check for their integrity. So we'll, uh, we'll assign it to check DBs. It'll go out and we'll see that, ooh, this is really bad. There's just like, I, I haven't run DBCC check DB on this entire server. Let me see one that I possibly did, but maybe not. Let's see. Oh, check it out. Okay, because so, I didn't want y'all to think like, oh man, it's just returning nulls across the board. This one did have a good check DB um, back in October and December of last year. And then we can see here which ones don't have any at all. Like this is really bad news. Or which ones haven't had their uh, their check DB run in the past day and you know and have it pass? Because if it fails, so I do actually have one um, system database that has failed since 2012. And whenever I see that, I'm always like, ow, ooh. Uh, but I'm gonna be migrating off of that when it's possible. So disk space, disk space is important to all of us. And what's really cool about get DB, DBA disk space is that it shows the information that you expect, right? Like percent free, uh, I don't know how many gigs, but it also shows, are there SQL disks on, or sorry, are there SQL data files on that disk and what's its uh, allocation, like, you know, 64K or whatever. And so now what it's gonna do is go out and get this information. So you can see we have, you know, the size, if it's free, percent free, block size, et cetera. Block size matters in some environments and other ones you should really talk to your storage vendor. Um, and, you know, for the ones that do, um, you know, block size can be important to know. So now it's just going through all of the servers to grab that. So what I do is, I always run. Now you're probably saying, Chrissy, you told me that that you know you have some. Let me do this. Hello. <laughs> so where do you get the uh, server names from? Um, so the server names. I'm sorry. I set them up here. Uh, we do have a command that is. It's get right right now. It's named get SQL registered server name, and it'll go to your CMS server. Um, but we're also going to create a command that kind of manages where all of your servers are and, and also the authentication. So I kind of want to take central management server and make it into a PowerShell command. And if anybody wants to volunteer to do it, we, we well, you'd have to do it after June 1st. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, thank yeah. you. Okay, I had said it at the top. Sorry, I kind of skimmed over that. So, um, so yeah, if you do dash detailed, then that's where it goes to each of the servers and it gets that, but I don't want to do that. Um, I think the SQL cluster might be the most interesting SQL cluster. And then I'm going to just format that. FT is format table. It's okay at the command line, but you don't want to really, you know, you want to always use format dash table because it's easier. All right, so now we can see that when you use detail, it shows you things that you don't necessarily care about, like the system reserved, but it also shows you the block size and is it a SQL disk so that you could see that I have SQL data files on M and L and nothing else. So those are the ones that are really important to me. The other thing um, that, that I do is disk space. Did I ever assign it? I wonder. I might not have. Let's see. 
Okay, I didn't. But this is what I run at work. So I assign my disk space. I, you know, like I go out to all of my servers and then I check where the percent free is less than 20. Um, I do manage my disks in general, but this was the one that would I would consider an emergency and I would not go on holiday or vacation. All right, so the next one. Let's see. I have 15 minutes. So I'm going to start speeding this up. All right. Uh, testing backups. How many of you in the audience test your backups? I'm looking at you, Rochester. I know you can't see me, but I could see you. Yeah. Oh, look, Krista. Oh, and, ooh, we got, we got, we got some testers. All right. So the, the problem with testing is that it's a pain, right? That's why everybody always talks about you test your backups, test your backups. We saw GitLab. They had a disaster recently. Um, and I think that the reason that not a lot of people necessarily do it is because it is a challenge or it was until now, because let's check out test DBA last backup. If you run this command that I just ran, get help space test dash DBA last backup and you do online, it'll go to our website where you can get more information. So this one has a video where, uh, where it shows a, a test. And then also it shows you that, so it restores a test database with a different name and all the file names are different too. Um, if you don't specify a destination, like a different server, it'll do it to the source server. I actually have a, a server that's dedicated to testing backups. Um, if you don't have enough space, like let's say you have a two terabyte database and you can't restore it, you could just set uh, max MB and so it won't try it. Um, and then also, again, we're there with the defaults, the data and log, but if you wanted to go somewhere else, then you can specify that as well. So let's go ahead and test our backups. First thing I'm going to do, I don't have to do this, but I want to be fancy. I'm going to import the module SQL server from Microsoft, and then I'm going to get my default file for localhost. All right. So you see this, and you might be wondering why. And I'm not going to have enough backups to make this as exciting as I want. All right. So if you'll see here potentially that what it's going to do is appear and disappear. Oh, uh, y'all see this? This says localhost and this says SQL 2005. So let me skip on this so that y'all know that it works. And then I'll come back to the other one that I really like watching those data files fly by. So I am going to test the last backups. What it does, it goes out to SQL 2005. It grabs a list of all of its databases and all of its last full backups. And then it will restore it. And then it will uh, perform a DBCC check table, which performs a DBCC check DB. And you can see that the restore result was success. So we're looking good here. Uh, this one skipped because the file wasn't found. So that's not so good. Uh, I can't run a check table for a restored master, even though it's a fake restored master. And this looks really good. I mean, for the most part, we have some that are skipped because they're not found, but overall, this server has some pretty solid backups. Really easy, really straightforward, so cool. You can also do just a verify only. So what this does is we have your, our source server, which is 2005, but I can also do that exact same thing that I just did, but instead of SQL Server 2005 restoring it to itself, set the destination. In this case, I'm just gonna verify only, so you could just see how it's working. Uh, when you do this brings up a good point. So when you specify another server, uh, make sure that your backups for me, I centralize all of my backups in one place. Um, and so, and that uses UNC shares. And so that's the only way for this to work with an, a different destination server. All right. So who in the audience won't test their backups? Cause it's too hard. It's too, it's easy, huh? Mm-hmm. No excuse now. It's so awesome. All right. Next up, VLFs. Um, so Kimberly Tripp likes to uh, write about VLFs. I learned a lot about them from her. And, uh, and what this does, we have two commands that deal with VLFs. The first one is test DBA virtual log file. And the other one is expand SQL C law. Sorry, let's see. Expand SQL T log responsibly. And what that does is it totally manages, it'll, it'll shrink your, your uh, log file down and it'll grow it back out in a proper way. Uh, I don't have time to show it. So I'm just going to show this part. So we can see, um, 
that I'm going to pipe all servers to test DBA virtual log file. And I'm just going to get it where the count is above 50. I'm going to send that to an outgrid view. So now it's going there. And it performed that, you know, like Kim, Kim Tripp writes about, like, she has this big SQL query. I don't have to ever remember that SQL query again because I just execute this PowerShell command. So, ooh, look, we have some things that we kind of need to take care of. Very easy to see. Next is, you're probably asking, hey, you showed me, you know, my disk space. What about my database space? Well, we got you there, too. We have this get DBA database free space that shows you information about your database files. So we have the database, the file name, the group, the physical name, the file type used, free, etc. And you, you're like, oh, Christy, you're just showing me this from, you know, from the command line. It's going to your screen. Who cares? Well, what you can do with that instead is you pipe it to a data table so it transforms this into something that sql server can easily consume and then you write it so now we're going to write it to tempdb.dbo.dispace example and it says hey two issues first the pipeline can be insanely slow for this it's not because it's a small data set but also it doesn't exist why don't you use autocreate table to autocreate all right so boom, it still gives us the pipeline warning, but now it's created this, um, it created the table in SQL Server. And what I'm gonna do now is open up SQL Server Management Studio. And I believe that that was SQL 2014. I hope, I should have tested it. Mm, what did I do? Oh, Claudio showed me this. If you do SQL command mode, then you can just connect like this. And there it is. So I did pipe it to SQL 2014. It created the table automatically, and then it piped in all of the information. So what you can do is easily keep track of all your database use over time. Is that exciting for you guys? Super easy? Isn't PowerShell so much? We hear how hard it is, right? Look, it ain't, it ain't super easy to, to program in the background, but not everybody is supposed to be doing the programming. This is intended for, this is the way that PowerShell is supposed to be used. And this is the way that now the SQL Server community has access to use. All right, so... Another thing that I really enjoy are blog posts turn into commands. So I go around and I look at blog posts and I'm like, man, that would be cool to be a command. So there's a guy, Jonathan Kenyanis. He created a, a formula that's like, hey, in general, this is what your max memory should be. And so I created a whole bunch of max memory commands around that. So the first thing I'm going to do is pipe all of my servers into get DBA max memory. And it'll show you, here's your total, here's your max. Ooh, y'all see what SQL cluster is doing? It's default, right? Two terabytes. What we could do is we could test it. So we're gonna pipe all servers to test DBA max memory, and then we're gonna format the table because it's prettier. All right, so check this out. So it goes in and it, it counts your instances, and then it shows you the total megs and then the SQL max setting and then the recommended. And it uses the instance count to calculate that number. So here's the recommended megs for each of those. And, you know, you might be like, ah, oh, uh, I don't know if I should run this command. I think that the safest command to run here is to test DBA max memory, get it where the SQL Max memory exceeds the total memory, right? Then nobody's messed with it. This is perfectly safe and better for your SQL server. And we're going to pipe it to a set DBA max memory and then do a what if. And then it'll tell you what would happen if. And then it'll show you the, um, the what's it called? The object. Now let's take this off and it'll actually perform it. So you can see just like that, it set the max memory and all servers, you can do this across your entire estate and just reconfigure everything in no time at all. If you're like, well, I don't really wanna go by, you know, what you calculated, you can just use max MB um, and specify the exact amount that you want and it'll go in. The old max value was five gigs and now it's two. So another one is the recovery model. Uh, Paul, Paul, Paul Randall. 
Yes. He, uh, he wrote about your, your recovery model, not necessarily being in full recovery. So if you're in simple and you go to full, you don't take a backup, you're in pseudo simple. You're still not protected. So what this does is it goes and it checks. And, um, this one, because I was doing some tests, I actually have uh, configured an actual across the board. If it didn't match up, then you can just execute this command and it'll show you the ones uh, that are set to pseudo simple. But awesomely enough, this is one of the healthy things about the lab. So far, we have all of our configured uh, recovery models are our actual recovery models. Next up, I think I might have covered backup history. I don't remember. We have backup history and also restore history. So both of those, you can get a lot of information about your backup history. And there's actually a new command that we'll be releasing and talking about next week, which is measure backup throughput that will show you about how long it takes and, and the speed and, and things like that. Okay, so here, you this is for an entire instance, but you can get it for just one instance. So if you, uh, sorry, one database. So if you only care about AdventureWorks, ooh, I changed the name. So let's see if my autocomplete, uh, I don't know how to use the ISC. I'm terrible at it. This is supposed to auto-populate and it's not. Um, let's see, what is that one? Real Cajun, that looked like one. I wonder if it still exists on there, probably not. Okay, never mind. So this usually auto populates. I don't know how to use the ISC to make it do it. So I'm just gonna just delete that and just delete the, I'm just deleting the whole video. <laughs> All right, so then there's the restore history. And boom, so fast, so useful and interesting. This was another blog post that, uh, that I took and I was like, that would be a really nice command. And boom, there it is. We can see that Claudio and I have been busy restoring things on this server. Man, I just don't like that red. Okay. Ah, this is really cool. Uh, how many of you in the audience in there in Rochester, do you, are you developers where you develop some T-SQL and stuff? Yeah. Hey, you ever were asked to like update a stored procedure and you're like, man, where is that? Which one, what, ah, oh, man, which one is it? I don't remember. I just messed with it. Well, now you can find DBA stored procedure with a pattern. And this isn't just a like. This is a regex pattern and it's super awesome. So let's, let me go and search all of my servers for the pattern DBA tools. Boom. What? Look at that. We have that. We have exactly the line number where it's found and it took no time at all. Now we do have some hidden things. Um, it's not just the line number. If you actually want the, the, the text, but we didn't want to show you this by default because it's ugly. But if you're all right with ugly, then you could just select star and then check it out. This is the store procedure. This is all the full text. So you can see your entire thing. What? Check this out. This is, a, we're just going to do a couple servers here. You see a couple servers. We're going to check it for, show me all the servers that have store procedures with email addresses in them for some reason. I don't know why was really great. So regex does take just a little bit longer, but what was really awesome is the other day. So it just found C La Mer on my 2016 server. What was really great is the other day I used this command to search through 36,000 store procedures across like nine servers in, I don't know, seven or nine seconds. So, so nice. And I, I just want to thank Claudio for this steward procedure text found. He put in a lot of work. I love that line number that shows you exactly what it is. It's just too awesome. All right. Next up is uh, rem uh, find DBA orphan file. So, um, you know, we, we will detach a, uh, a database and just kind of leave it hanging out and forget to clean up after ourselves. So this command will go, look how many. <laughs> there are so many in here that I was like, oh, this is, this isn't returning stuff properly, but it actually is. So then we can do a sum. I am wasting 423 megs on this server. So you know what I'm gonna do? I could just do a pipe to what if, but we already know, look, boom, done. All right, so we just removed everything just like that. What we can also do is pipe it to a move item. So it'll just move it from that SQL server to another directory. So, you know, you're like, oh, I can reattach it at any time. 
How exciting is that? Mm hmm. This is why so many years we've been saying PowerShell is awesome. PowerShell is awesome. And this is the awesome that everybody's been talking about. All right, here's another one that's fun. One time I was on Reddit and I was bored and somebody was like, ah, I just inherited a SQL server and, uh, and I can't get in and no administrators can get in either. And that has happened to me so many times. Hey, Chrissy, I need you to be the DBA for this. All right, well, what's the, what's the credentials? I don't know. Well, how am I supposed to get in? It's a pain, right? It's like this 87 stop, step process. Not anymore. You just do reset SQL admin. You specify the, the instance and then the login. What it'll do is if you just, if I were to specify like base control B, which is my, my um, uh, Windows account, it'll just add that. Or if it doesn't detect that it's a Windows account, then it'll create a new um, SQL login. Well, it'll check to see if it exists. And if it does, then, uh, then it'll just give it what it needs. If not, it'll, it'll actually reset your password and everything like that. So let's go ahead and see it in action. It takes less than 20 seconds in general. So are you sure you want to perform this action? Um, I'm going to stop. It's, it's going to restart. And what it does is this is a legitimate thing. You can't do it unless you have windows administrator access. And this is the way that Microsoft says to do it. It'll stop it. It'll restart it in single user only mode, but it'll also pass uh, a slash M DBA tools only so that only DBA tools can get in. So even if your, your, your server's being hammered by SharePoint, um, you're the only one who can actually get in. So I'm going to say yes. And then it'll say, Hey, I detected that you're trying to log in with the SQL authentication. So do something. I'm just going to put a, all right. So it's stopping the services. And now it's starting it from command line and check out what it does. So it adds the login if it doesn't exist and enables mixed mode authentication because maybe that's why you can't get in. Um, it's ensuring that the account is unlocked, that the account is enabled, that it exists with the sysadmin role, and then it's done and boom, now you can log in and you can do this with Windows credentials as well. Like let's see base control B. Let's see how well this works. Yes. Yes, I do. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I can't figure out the perfect way to do that, but it's just telling you, I'm going to try it. I think that, oh, you know what? It doesn't exist. Check that out because I just did control B. Let me, let me just clear this. This is another part of the video. I'm just going to edit out. All right. So let's try again. It, I am nice though. I keep trying anyway, even if you make, even if you make a mistake, I'm just like, I'm going to try and, and do it. So there it checked to ensure that the account was valid. And now the SQL server is like, man, I'm, t I'm tired of you restarting me. <laughs> what you doing? All right. So now control B has, um, has full access and I'm almost done here. Hey, some startup parameters. Who wants to know their startup parameters? Who can remember all of them? I can't. There's like a whole lot of stuff that you can set, but now super easy. Look at that. You can set your data, your air log, trace flags, uh, minimal start memory to reserve all this stuff. What I like about this is it kind of, it helps me see the startup parameters in my head. Like, you know, instead of being like, ah, you go to this Microsoft page and everything is so foreign. This makes it really easy to see what's going on with my SQL server. And the last one, uh, who here uses SP who is active? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, we, we got a big fan there. All right. So as you remember, uh, so whenever you execute it, you have to, you have all those parameters and stuff like that. And what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to open it from here because I don't really know how to use the ISC, like I said before. So I'm going to uh, import module DBA tools. And this is my, my little thing. So I'm going to force that. All right. So show SQL, who is active? Uh, Adam mechanic was so super nice. I wrote to him. I was like, Hey Adam, I really want to take your script and automate it. Can I do this stuff? And he said, yeah, just make sure that you go and grab it from my site each time. So what this does is if you don't have, um, who SP, who is active on your server, it'll go out to the internet, it'll download it, extract it and install it. And then it'll make it really easy to navigate through all of the uh, parameters. So now we're going to have a show who is active and specify the SQL server, SQL 2016. 
Oh, oh, oh my God, it already came up, but that wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. So if it wasn't there, obviously it has it installed. Uh, it will prompt you to, it'll give you a list of your databases and then you can just select it. All right, so next we have secret credential filter. Oh, hey, does that look familiar to the ones use that, that use um, this command? Show own SPID, show system SPIDs, get full inner text. Look, instead of remembering all that, I'm just like tab, tab, tab. Do I love to tab. I just tab all the time. So I'm going to show own SPID, and then I'm also going to show system SPIDs to make it useful. So you know what's really nice about this? Like, you know, we've always wanted that from SSMS, like some super awesome filtering, some, look at this, just like ordering, doing all of that. What if I just want runnable things? So I just type in runnable, runnable. So there's runnable. Uh, it gives you all of the information that he has. And so, yeah, that was, uh, so I also have uh, update uh, SQL who is active, install SQL who is active and show, which is really cool. So, uh, yeah, that is the conclusion for my portion of DBA tools. I am only four minutes and 44 seconds over, which is really exciting. Uh, and now I would like to welcome Rob Sewell. He is going to talk about the sister project to uh, DBA tools, which is DBA reports. And the way that you can get there is by going <laughs> to dbareports.io or, hey, Rob, I didn't tell you. I put up a little link right here. Somebody requested it. And I was like, hey, that's a really good idea. So there we have it. We could just go to his website. Rob, are you available? Rob. Rob. All right. Hey, Rob's not there, which kind of works out because I forgot to show you around the website. So this is dbatools.io. As I said before, you can just go to download. Let me just close out all the other tabs. So download, command index, videos, oh, that goes to the YouTube channel, team, and then some other things. All right, so we had seen download really easy. You just, I even added more ways. So now there's like five ways to download it. Um, commands, these are all of the commands from DBA tools. We're working really hard, as you saw with the find DBA command to make it as easy, because we're just gonna keep adding really awesome things um, and so we're figuring out, figuring out a way to index them well. So there's general administration, utilities, and so on. And each of these, when you click on them, some of them have more information than, than others, but we really do try for at least uh, having a screenshot. So here's find DBA database that just like, if you, oh, which database is that, you know, which server is that on? Here's a, a nice... Let me see, reduce that. Here's a nice longer one with references. Anytime that we use somebody's work, we reference them. Uh, find test SQL network latency. This, that one's pretty cool. Ola Hallengren kind of suggested that uh, this command and I thought it was really nice. And then at the bottom of every one, it shows you if you don't know PowerShell, look, you just copy that and then paste it in and boom, that's how you get help. Uh, you can also, if you want to see what the code is that's going on, you just click that link and you can just see that there. And then uh, we do have a YouTube channel. If you go to dbatools.io slash YouTube, uh, we have a, a channel where we talk about things. Rob also talks about things. And then we have the team page. So the team page is my favorite. Look, look who it is, Rochester. It's Chris. Woo! Thank you, Chris. We have a celebrity. We do, yeah. we do. And after I show you this, I could actually, let's see. Oh, just for everybody in the audience, if you want, you can subscribe here. And then whenever Snowball comes out, then you can get immediately notified because we already have, as you saw, the page ready. We're just going to to publish it. Um, so let's see, Sommer, S-O-M. You look, I had, I had searched before. So let's see which ones he's done. So he's done remove DBA backup and export DBA availability group. He was also part of the inaugural class of 2016. Woo. So um, let's go back to the team for the major contributors. So if you are interested in joining, we have a whole bunch of people that are on Slack that are really amazing. Um, and, uh, 
yeah, it, you can, to become a major contributor, you can either uh, contribute uh, an entire command, uh, do, a, you know, a lot of debugging and, and bug fixing, um, fix documentation, um, hang out and suggest really awesome things and, and do awesome things. Uh, and so we want everybody to join in on the fun. We try to make it as easy as possible. Um, we make sure that nobody feels like judged for their code. We want people to have fun. Um, and, and I mean, to me, it's kind of my dream to have a whole bunch of people that know how to do SQL PowerShell because I love them both. And I think that they belong together and I look forward to the future with everybody jumping in and, and programming DBA tools for the things that they need. Because if you need it, I probably need it too. And you just saved me a whole bunch of time. And I'm, am I still Rob Sewell, Mr. Rob, man, you know, Rob is. Rob's having some network issues and yes. uh, he said he's rebooting his router. Cool. Okay. Um, so I see that we maybe have some, wow, that's, that's some questions. What is instance? Oh man. Okay. Let me try Let me try to pop this out and, uh, all right, let's see. Choppy audio from Belgium again. It's not, uh, you know, I, maybe it's the winds. <laughs> I think it's somewhere in America. It's 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 the backbone. AT and T. I blame them. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, it, people do ask a lot about uh, an add and in, in, uh, install and setup module. Somebody did create that. Um, it is called Spade. S P A D E. Um, and at this time, I think that if we do get into the install and setup, it'll probably be through DSC. But DSC, I find very challenging at this point. And so, um, not currently, but in the future, I, I would like to make that easier for people. Uh, Minion for Midnight DBA, uh, arguably, be arguably better than Ola stuff. Uh, I love Ola stuff, uh, and I'll just leave it there. Um, our scripts working with Azure, uh, we had gone over that. Not yet, probably. Um, let's see. Where's the default location that the test DB? Uh, last backup check for the backup files. So it there, it doesn't check for any directory. What it does is it goes to the database and it asks the database, hey, where's the last place that you backed up to? And it gets that information. So it's not doing any scanning. Although that is something that we would be able to do later. I apologize. That's probably my mama calling. Um, let's see. Yes. Uh, if you... If you need to update DBA tools and you installed it from the gallery, you can update dash module DBA tools. If you didn't, then you can run uh, update dash DBA tools. Um, but don't run it if you installed it from the gallery because they collide. Let's see. Uh, somebody had invoke expression something. Oh, Okay, I'll work with you, Michael Kirkpatrick. Email me or hit me up on, on Twitter if you're there. I'm CL and then rmclamare at gmail.com. Somebody asked what instance was. Uh, I had set that as a variable at the top here. So you can see old equals instance equals, so it's the string. This is the name of my computer. So if I ping SQL 2014, so it's just the name of one of my instances. All right. Uh, thanks. Is there a GitHub project? Uh, is, there is a GitHub project DSC data driven deployment. Oh, cool. Um, I would say that I would take a look at that, but um, it, that it, it would it would be. Oh, hey, ooh, if you like it, good. If you like it, do me a favor and join the team and um, and and help us with it because we do need some DSC people, and that is something that I'm open to. But I just it's not on my personal agenda. How's Robert? Question about this SP who is active. Yes. Uh, I noticed that uh, when you run uh, this commandlet, it, uh, you said that it installed this uh, start procedure on the server, yes? Yes, yes. But w was there any warning that it will be installing something on the server? Um. So it's possible. Let let me do it on on a on another computer that doesn't have it on there. Oh because yeah. In my yeah. environment, it uh, would be if you a hit big no-no if I would 
run something that it installed. So what it says is procedure isn't found yeah. installing. And then, uh, then I, you know, say the author of this stored procedure recommends deploying it to your master database and then you're offered where to install it. Um, if you don't want to, if you're like, Ooh, that's not something that I want, then you just hit cancel. And then it says you must select a database to install. So it'll just cancel out. But if you okay. do, let's go watch it. Let's go see it. So it'll go out to the internet and then boom. And so I have it in my cache, which is why it looked like it didn't do anything. Okay. Y'all know. Thank you. It. No problem. Is that actually installing something or is it just creating a stored procedure? It, it just creates the stored procedure. So it downloads it from Adam's site, extracts it, and it, it, it's, it's SPU is active. So yeah, it didn't install it. But I mean, it, yeah, I call it install it. Oh yeah, there's no exe. No, yeah, that's that's straight up just T SQL. I'm just passing it the T SQL. <clears throat> can you exclude system databases from the find DBA store procedure command? Yes, you can. I think by default it might. Let's see. Find DBA store procedure uh, tab. Let's see. Pattern include system objects and include system databases. So by default, it doesn't include the system databases or system objects. That slows it down a lot. Um, so yeah, by default, it does what you want, which is what we always like. Uh, one more question about those, uh, this uh, object to list the available disk space. Yes. I uh, I think that I noticed that you listed all the drives on the on the servers, not not just the the SQL related drives. Yes. Um, right. So by default, it'll get it won't get compact disks or like you know removable media or anything yeah, like that. Thank but, you. but what you can yeah. do is uh, you just pipe it to uh, and you say is SQL uh, equals true. And um, and then you can get it that way. So by default, it gets the you know all all of your I forgot what it's called uh, you know, your regular drives, and then you can make it you can make it just filter it down. But that is with a where. Chrissy, I have a quick question. Yes. Um, so going back to that that one command about testing your backups. Yes. I think you mentioned that it it you passes the database name, it looks at where the last backup was, and then it restores it with a different um, database name, different files, all that kind of stuff. Correct. Um, it, what if you wanted to, re to test your ability to restore at a point in time? So yeah. you, know, you might have to take consideration you know, transaction logs and all of that. Is, is that can you pass that along? Not currently, but that is absolutely something that, that I want to test. Because this, in its current state, it only tests full, um, okay. the most recent full. But I do want to go through the entire thing. I think that that's something that I'll be able to work. Now that we have uh, Stuart on our team, uh, we'll be able to use his restore commands to help with that. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for your question. Ooh, y'all, look at that. Mm. Okay. Uh, does DBA tools also install SQL Server? It does not. Not not at this time. It's a really challenging thing. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> so not not right now. Poor Rob. Look, hey, you know what? Whoever was clowning Belgium's internet, at least I have it. <laughs> So poor Rob is just, <laughs> we're just still waiting. Poor guy. Sean, Sean, he likes, he's saying UA equals DSC. Man, I, I, I've seen it. I've, I've, I've heard people talk about it. I've just, it hasn't, you have a wait. So whenever I was learning, I remember when I was first introduced to PowerShell um, and I was like, God, I would, I would pay money to know this. Like, I want to know it so badly. Um, and it took like six years. And then I finally woke up one day and I was like, oh my God, I feel so free. I finally know how to program PowerShell. 
And DSC is, is, you know, it's kind of that way for me. It just, it hasn't clicked. I haven't woken up and been like, oh, I could do DSC. So, hey, does DBA tools work in PowerShell for Linux? Okay, so I kind of have an answer for this, yes and no. Watch how cool you guys. First of all, oh wait, that's not what I want to do. You, no, DBA tools, nope, DBA tools slash YouTube. Okay. All right. So do awesome things contributing. I wanted to show you guys a test migration with, because I don't remember if my other one, no, it went through pretty well, right? Let me see. Yeah, never mind. That one you guys had seen pretty well. But to answer your question about Linux, I did do something with Linux. Can I search a YouTube channel? Mm-mm. How I do that? You'll be able to. I know, right? We all see it. Let me just control it. Linux. Oh, there we go. So I did a preliminary test and, uh, and I was really excited that I was able to migrate most things, um, except for the database that was near impossible. So if you go to our YouTube channel, just control F Linux, you can see what I, what I did. Um, have I run it on Linux? Do I even remember if it can do it? Um, I don't remember. I don't remember if SMO is, is on Linux and if I can use it that way, but you can use your windows, uh, installation to manage just like how you connect with SQL server management studio. You can use the same thing with DBA tools. And yeah, that is something that, that I, I really like, um, that I do want to pay attention to in the future. So 2.0 is going to be more about Linux and, uh, and Azure, but Azure is a challenge. So, uh, and, and install because everybody wants to install who doesn't, I think Sean volunteered to do DSC for us. Is that right? Sean Melton. Well, it looks like Rob's back online. Hey, Rob. We're just chilling, watching this, this, this migration. You know, what's really cool about this. Uh, I know that it's kind of a hack, um, but uh, if you try to create a linked server in, um, in SSMS on a Linux server, it'll be like, no, it won't work. But DBA tools actually copies over the link server with no problem. Uh, I haven't tested to see it might even work, but I, it's not going to be supported. So, uh, but I did find that interesting that it will allow it. SMO allows it, but something with SSMS doesn't. What are the differences between DBA tools and the new SQL PS modules? Um, there's a, uh, so the SQL PS module is now called SQL Server. Um, it's uh, shipped with SQL Server Management Studio a couple times a month. Um, and the primary difference is, so we're a community and we program it, use like we, we this module is made of functions and, and PS1. They, um, Microsoft is, is working with a lot of the basics. I feel like the DBA tools has a lot more freedom to do funky things. I can't see like find DBA store procedure, um, ever being in there, you know, on their agenda. Cause there's just so many other things for them to do. Uh, but they make commandlet. So it's written in C sharp. Um, and it, it's a very formal process and it's backed by Microsoft. Um, but it is right now, just kind of uh, beginner commands, you know, like get SQL login and stuff like that. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Ours is, it's it's a community project. And, and, and the other difference is that they have about 75 commands and we're up to 140 uh, in, you know, in less than a year. Um, and so uh, I think that you'll be, yeah, yeah, it's, and it's fun. I don't know, it's, does that answer your question, Kylie? Oh, that's Kyle Malone. That's a nice name. Chris, yes. you have another question. For me. Yes. Um, so I, I know that there was a command, uh, the migration command <laughs> that um, I think it executes something like 27 commands behind the scenes, yes. something like that. Yes. So what if, what if I just wanted to kind of extract all of the settings and all the databases and all of the triggers and link servers and everything from a from an instance 
Um, so if you want to export it? More, more or less. Like, I actually had a need recently. Please don't ask me the story behind it. But I had to uninstall an instance from a server um, and then reinstall a fresh instance. And I wanted all the settings from the original one to be on on this new one, but you know, we're talking the same server. Totally. So it's not like I have them both up at the same time to be able to just migrate it with um, the command. So there are a couple export commands. If you go to, is my screen still showing? Uh, no. So, no, it's not. All right, let me just show it real quick. Oh, show, there we go. All right, so whenever you go to dbatools.io slash commands, y'all could see it now? Yes. Whenever I say that it wraps around all of this stuff, it's all of these. So however many is this number, except for uh, the, the catalog. I haven't included that yet. Um, so it wraps around all of these. What you want are exports. So actually, if you do get command module DBA tools and then um, export. So these are the only things that we can export right now. If I were you and I was doing that, I would um, I would set up a new server and I would migrate to that new server and then I would migrate back to the other server and then that'll keep everything. It's It would be so much easier that way. That's not a, not a bad idea. Fortunately, we, we hadn't done a ton of configuration, so I, I kind of just, uh, I found a script that had a lot of the default values <laughs> of the instance, so I knew that it changed. Yeah, yeah, kind of like, yeah. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So I guess we poor poor Rob. Uh, let's. Ah, uh, I'm trying to. Uh, he has like such, he has such a cool thing. So Rob's uh, project is at dbareports.io, and it's a dashboard. Um, and I I I wish that I even knew where like a good video was, but then. Um, I don't think they go to webinar plays videos very well, but if you guys go to DBA reports.io, it's something that, that I use, uh, as well. I've always wanted a dashboard and this uses, uh, it, it comes with an installation and then the installer goes out to your SQL server and creates agent jobs. I'm going to turn off my webcam cause I distract myself with my, with my hands. Um, so it, uh, it goes and it creates jobs. And then these jobs go out to other SQL servers. They collect disk information. They collect database information, configuration information, and all this stuff. And it stores it. Um, and then the module comes with, if you look inside um, of, of the directory, it has uh, samples, uh, SQL server reporting services, uh, files, and also Power BI. And it's just so very impressive. Um, and so I, I, I get the video up. Yeah. Oh, what? Okay. Take it. Cool. Give me just a moment. Or at least a little, a little clip to show you some of the capabilities. Yeah. I, uh, fast forward to the part where he starts asking like how many servers. That's where exactly where I have it. Excellent. I am here now, by the way. Oh, hi. <laughs> Where'd you Poor go? Guy. So, uh, internet dropped out, and then it obviously, um, I was going to use the rude word, it broke my network uh, connection, <laughs> my driver. So, w even when I went and rebooted the uh, router and came back, all I was getting was general failure. Gosh. So, I had to reboot the machine. So you ready to show that, or I'm should I go? ready to show? Yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Okay. Yeah, um, because, just, sorry, um, can I just jump in real quick? Uh, we have okay. we only have the room here for about 15 more minutes. Right. Cool. Let's go quick then. Send it to you, Rob. Okay. Share my screen, yes, please. Let's share that screen. So, with a bit of luck, you can see some PowerShell. You don't have your screen. There we go. There we go. There we go. Excellent. Good, good, good. So, uh, let's do this real quick.
So that's me. Here I am. This is my stuff. You can find everything I've got on uh, my GitHub. You'll find me on SQL DBA with a beard. We want to talk about questions that everybody asks that distract our DBA. Uh, we're going to get rid of the old way. That's my favorite script. And give some nice funky views for the DBA team. Create ourselves a self-service um, place for all of our users to go and get the information from one source to the truth. We need SQL Server to store our data. We need our data, which relies on some local knowledge, which may or may not involve going to the pub and sitting with the guy who's been there for 30 years and writing it down on the back of a tissue. Uh, you need Windows PowerShell because everybody loves PowerShell and Power BI because it's cool and funky. And that's how easy it is. Two simple commands, one to install DBA reports and one to add the server. And this kind of is the funkiest to what it does. It loads a list, grabs all the information, puts um, from using PowerShell scripts that are called by agent jobs, and then you can query it with PowerShell or with TC call or with Power BI and leave yourself nice and happily to sit and drink your DBA tea, especially if you've got a DBA tea mug. Uh, there we go, it must be time for a demo. So let's get rid of that. Have a demo. I've got Jeff Hicks. This is what happens when you press it, it's a demo. So because I always believe that everybody should use PESTA to test their environment before they do anything, including a presentation, what we have just done is tested that all of these things in my lab are up and running, they're responding to ping, and that their agent and their SQL is running. And we're just going to set a name for our database. And what I'm going to do is the remove module might just fail on me this time. I'm just going to import the module. You can go and get it from the gallery or you can get it from um, DBA reports.io. And in that module, we have some commands. First command I'm going to look at is the install DBA reports. So this is going to go to our SQL 2016 node one server. It's going to give a database name of DBA reports and an install path where we're going to put our logs. And I put it in verbose mode just so you can see what's going on. And it comes up, it says, would you like me to create a database named this on SQL? I said, yes, please. It's very polite. We try to be as polite as possible. Would you like to create a proxy? Um, so if you are using your agent to connect to other servers, you need to have Windows and SQL permissions on those servers. You might need to use a different credential than the one that you've got your agent running as, but I know that mine's got everything that it needs. And as you can see now, what we're doing is um, updating our PS1 files for our um, agent jobs with the details that you provided and then creating all of our objects and tables, our store procedures and uh, some TVPs, use table value parameters to load our um, data so it happens really blazingly quick and it's going to keep chugging away and then create some agent jobs. So we've uh, successfully added our um, service, uh, the account that's running our agent, or it would be our proxy if it was a proxy as the owner. We've created some DBA reports, and it says, uh, would you like me to open an elevated prompt so that I can set DBA reports as an alias on your machine to the server? So I'm just going to say no, just to make life quickly. And it says, all oh, right, I can see that you've got SQL 2016 node 1, so should we add it onto the inventory? Oh, yes, please, let's do that. And away it goes. Uh, would you like to look at the log? This is the log of the install, the addition of the server. It just says what we've done. And it says, would you like to review your install log? Which is pretty much going to show us what we've seen in our verbose, all the information about our install saved in a log file. Now we're going to add some servers. So as you see, I've got a few servers running on my machine. And I'm going to use add DBR server to inventory. I'm going to give it that uh, array of instances. I'm going to give it an environment name of production and a location of inside my nook, because that's where it is. And let's make sure we run all of that. And away it goes. 
and it says, would you like to review the log now? And you might have just seen the little warning flash past, and there is our warning, and it says SQL 2016 node warning already exists. So it already knows that we've got that information, and it just goes through and updates it. And we've just added, um, I don't know, that's eight or nine instances in um, two seconds, three seconds, something like that. And now we need to start our jobs to um, go and gather our information. So I'm going to start those now, and then I'm going to go and get the jobs that we've got and pipe them out to a grid view, which typically opens down here. So as you can see, we love our grid view because of its funky, no, it's not called beard, it's called, there we go, that's better. Um, because it's funky filtering. My pet peeve is the descriptions on agent jobs. So I make sure that we put in nice good information telling you what we're doing, um, which table we're using, which database we're using, and where we're logging. So you've got all that information. And as you can see, we're going to gather information about our agent jobs, our alerts, um, in, inactive databases, database information, disk usage, um, historical database size, a, a cleanup, SQL Server information, suspect pages, and um, any errors in our log file. So hopefully, if we look at those jobs now, they should be ticking away. Uh, looks like they're now idle. That's excellent. So those ones have succeeded. And as we said, what we have done is we have created ourselves, if we just do a refresh on here, our database with our tables in it. And we can, if we wish, just query that information. How many servers do I have? I'm actually using my demo database here just to get some nice information. So we can use, use some of these queries to find out information about what we've got on our estate. Alternatively, we could do this in um, PowerShell. So that's just going to show the instances that we've just added and all the information that we've got about them in the instance list table. We create a little JSON config file which sits on this server and tells us where everything is, where our log files are, and which user we are going to use to connect. Now, perhaps somebody walks up and says, I want all the information about SQL 2015 Server 12 R2. There you go, that's all the information that we've got. So that looks a bit lot. So let's, we've put it into a file. We'll just grab our file quickly. And we can see we've got information about our instance, we've got our system information, which version, which SQL version, which Windows version, apologies. And then our SQL instance level, all of these properties we have available. And then we go into our database information. For each database, we're getting a lot of information. We'll keep going down. And at the end of the databases, we have our agent roll-up information. So today, when it when it had a look, it had 13 jobs and 11 had been successful. One was disabled, and one we don't know. And then tells us the actual information about each of those jobs and their job runs. Nice and easy. We just put it out wherever we want to. We can also make use of this. Um, database to hold the information about our servers and we can run our pester test just to quickly make sure and see what's going on. Show the GUI. But we've got it into uh, uh, no we, <laughs> we're going into a uh, SSRS report we have a look at our DBA reports we create a number of reports and the main one really is the, is the front page so we have 11 failed jobs in here. And as you notice, this is our log file errors, where which the job which scrapes those would place into there. Have a look, got some failed jobs. Oh, red is bad, green is good. These number, these servers have had failed jobs showing when we last checked. So if we click on one of those servers, it's gonna tell us that these ones that have been in red have failed. So the def leopard groupy data has not been loaded and collector 39 has not run. So the genie DPA needs to go out and start working on that. And I've quickly forgotten how to go backwards. Um, 
Also, we have information about when our databases were last used. So we can see that uh, SQL Server N01, I got bored of um, sanitizing in a fun way. And name of database 23 has not been used since the last reboot. It's not been read to or written to. That's gathered using the index stats, so it won't work on SQL 2000 boxes. It was last rebooted on the 18th of September, so it's 151 days ago, and we checked it today. And if we go down and see, you see it's, the report is ordered so that we can get that information. It says click here for the service report. Okay, I will. And that will show us the servers that have databases that haven't been used since the last time it was rebooted and how many databases there are. But that's not all that we do. Um, I didn't open my Power BI desktop, but um, we also have a number of Power BI um, reports. So here's a nice one, and as we know with our Power BI reports, if we just move this down, this is all set up nicely ready for you. Showing us where our servers are in relation to England. And we could filter these by production and everything will change. See, gives us different amounts. We can see there are 60 in Bolton, which is obviously the most important place because it's where I was born. Even though I am currently based somewhere down here between Cardiff and Exeter. And we could filter by version as well. And as we all know, management love things that they can interact with. So if we want to see which SQL 2005 boxes we've got in our production environment, we've got this going on nice and simply. But that's not all that we've got, because as well as our reports, we also create ourselves some um, dashboards. And the beauty with the dashboards is that we can not only have these pinned tiles that we can make use of in uh, presentations or in emails, but we can ask questions. So now we can say things like, how many servers? 146 Woo! in Bolton. Go away, 55. Oh no, actually, uh, how many do we have? Exeter, 34. Um, let's see, with XP command shell enabled, oops, what? even <laughs> enabled, <laughs> now I only want to know the ones that are true, uh, and refresh, so that's pretty cool, but we can also do things like, come on, we can also do things like forget how to type. It is, to be fair to me, it is one o'clock in the morning. Um, Try two. So we, yeah, it's two for you, but, you, but Chrissy, as we know, is a night owl. I, I am normally up and about about quarter six. So um, we could do things like uh, how good would it be to be able to say which clients' name are in Bristol? And you see, even with a miss. Oh no, I didn't mistype it. Normally I mistype client. It's telling us which ones we've got. So Def Leppard, Marillion, Meatloaf, and Pink Floyd are all based, their data is based in Bristol. And in Exeter, we have all of those. So that's pretty cool. And then it gets even better. Now this may or may not work. So we're we're gonna we're gonna give it a go. But as well as having our um QA live for our users to be able to use. If they have their Cortana account that is allowed to access the dashboard set up their um, Windows machine, they can say things like, hey Cortana, what was the last backup date for client the Eagles? And Eventually, with a little bit of luck, yes, we go to Bing. Excellent. Thank you so much, Cortana. Let me try one more time. I'll just type it in this time, but when was the last, last 
back up date for find the eagles. Oh, I was the last. <laughs> and cool Tyler has completely and utterly let me down. So we'll try this one instead. Let's try which servers are, uh, no, it's not going to go because it would be coming up in here. Which servers are version SQL 2012? So my lack of internet is failing me, but if you were to go to SQLDBAWithBeard.com and the tag Cortana or search for Cortana, you will find this video, which I had preset up at the right moment, but has failed me, and you'll see it actually working. And in fact, I was showing it only today to uh, one of our directors on my phone. Um, that was a super quick rush through of very fantastic um, reports. minutes. Very nice. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Fortunately, let's have a look at that. So, DBA reports. There's the team of wonderful people. That's how you find out some more about us. Partial virtual chapter of pass. Um, next meeting is Wednesday, February the 22nd. I don't know the time because I tweeted the wrong one out earlier <laughs> on. Um, but it's converting unreliable deployments into consistent releases by Thomas Norman. And you will find us at sqlps.io. And all of our videos are on YouTube on sqlps.io slash video. So last but awesome. not least. Yeah, thank you everybody for joining us. And thank you out in Rochester for staying and, and, and everybody online. This has been a lot of fun. Well, th thank you, Chrissy, Rob, and Aaron. And uh, Chrissy and Rob, please get some sleep. It's late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going. We'll do, definitely. I'm going. Thank you very much. We'll catch up tomorrow. All righty. Bye bye. Any Thank questions, anybody, just shout at us. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. Perfect. Thank you. Good night. Thanks.